Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us here on the program once again. In this segment, going to have a conversation with Dr. Jonathan Steinfeld. He's Global Clinical Lead for GSK, and he's joining us to talk about Nucala. Welcome to the program, Dr. Steinfeld. Thank you for taking the time. Hi, Neil. Thank you for having me. Uh, A bit of background about yourself as Global Clinical Lead. What is your role there? So I'm a uh, medical director. I'm the clinical lead for the Nucala Pediatric Severe Asthma Program, uh, along with several other indications for Nucala. Severe pediatric asthma. Are there different levels of pediatric asthma? Yeah. So asthma is is the most common chronic disease among children. Uh, So there are, of course, several different levels around it. Uh, And about 5% of patients with asthma uh, will have severe asthma. And even further, there's a subset of severe eosinophilic asthma, um, which is a a very difficult to treat uh, group of patients with a large amount of inflammation in the lungs. Is that what sets it apart from other severe types of asthma? Yeah, so there are different categories and phenotypes that people have tried to classify asthma in, uh, and while the literature is is more um, evolved in in adult and adolescent asthma, uh, there's still some evidence that uh, eosinophilic asthma is a, is, a, is a problem for pediatric patients, for children as well. Are the causes of asthma in general the same as those that cause this uh, severe type of asthma? Yes. So it's, it's more the body, the severe eosinophilic asthma is more how the body responds to uh, triggers. Um, and uh, the body responds for any eosinophilic asthma uh, with an over production of, of eosinophils, and that leads to inflammation uh, in multiple areas, including the lungs. And uh, interleukin-5 is the, the main promoter of eosinophil growth, activation, survival, and uh, provides an essential sig- signal for movement of eosinophils from the bone marrow into the lungs. And that's where Nucala works. Nucala blocks IL-5 from binding to the IL-5 receptor on the surface of eosinophils. Is this a recent approval of, of Nucala? Yeah, so this is a recent approval um, just this September. Um, the, uh, Nucala was approved for children uh, between the ages of 6 to 11 uh, in the U.S. with severe eosinophilic asthma. Uh, however, Nucala has been uh, approved uh, in the U.S. Um, it was initially approved in, uh, for severe asthma uh, in adults and adolescents, uh, age 12 and older. Uh, and then in uh, 2017, it was also extended uh, for the treatment of EGPA, which is a rare disease um, as well. How many children uh, in the asthma population are, are living with this severe type of uh, asthma? So it's difficult to tell, but our, our estimates uh, show that uh, likely around 9,000 uh, patients in the U.S. between the ages of uh, 6 to 11 have severe eosinophilic asthma. And so that's a, that's a big deal because this is, uh, this is severe eosinophilic asthma affects uh, patients with uh, multiple exacerbations, multiple uh, asthma flares, um, missed days of school, hospitalizations, emergency room visits, and then the need for chronic oral steroids um, to treat these uh, asthma attacks, which is um, very, it, it affects the patients uh, quite a bit. Severe asthma in adults, obviously, you know, you're talking about missing school with children. With adults, them being older, stronger, is that one of the reasons that there was such a push to get this uh, approved for children who are suffering with the same type of asthma? So when uh, in drug development, we uh, we start first in making sure that a drug is uh, shows efficacy and safety in adults and adolescents. And so once we saw that, uh, this is something that we also uh, investigated uh, in children uh, to see if we could see the same benefit that adults and adolescents have from Nucala to see if that same benefit could be seen uh, in children. There are very few treatment options for children with severe eosinophilic asthma, uh, and uh, we felt that Nucala would be very beneficial. And uh, from the results of our studies, we saw that um, the improvement from baseline uh, was very, very similar between uh, children and the adults and adolescents. Did it reduce significantly the time between flare-ups? So what we studied, so the way that we studied was a, a pretty innovative uh, approach um, for children because it's, it's difficult to run a, a placebo-controlled trial uh, in these severe patients and children. So uh, what we did was a, a program uh, showing uh, that the benefits that we saw in, 
in adults and adolescents, which we saw in these double-blind placebo-controlled trials, that the uh, we then did a 52, uh, 12-week and then a 52-week open-label study in children uh, to see if those improvements from baseline would be the same. Um, because it's a smaller program, uh, we didn't measure time between uh, as many exacerbations. Instead, we looked at the um, overall yearly rates of exacerbations, and we saw the same improvement that we saw in adults and adolescents. What about uh, some of the uh, some of the side effects from this uh, new treatment in children six to eleven years old? Yeah, so that's uh, that's one of the benefits of um, of a targeted therapy. So Nucala blocks IL five, uh, you know, right from binding at the IL five receptor, uh, and so in acts directly at the start of the eosinophilic inflammatory response. This is a targeted therapy rather than the um, uh, other therapies that are used, such as as, uh, chronic oral steroids or acute oral steroids, systemic steroids. And uh, the systemic steroids themselves have the you know, the predictable effects on growth and bone um, so uh, and, and mental status also. So you want to avoid as many uh, oral steroids as you can. Uh, with Nucala, we saw that the safety signal, which, you know, Nucala has a very long track record, a very good safety signal, uh, uh, you know, well tolerated uh, in adults and adolescents. Thousands of patients in GSK-sponsored clinical trials have been treated, um, but we also uh, saw no change in the safety signal for children 6 to 11. But, uh, of course, it's the healthcare practitioners need to decide if Nucala is right for the patient, and each healthcare provider knows their patient's history. Nucala is an add-on, so patients are treated with their uh, baseline standard of care, which is uh, typically inhaled steroids and then a long-acting beta agonist uh, or other medications. It's similar to the international guidelines. Uh, and then patients that are not uh, that are not controlled with that high level of care um, uh, need additional medication, and that's where Nicola is added to those medications. So Nicola is not for acute attacks. Uh, it's instead taken monthly um, to prevent uh, attacks, uh, asthma attacks. To prevent the severe uh, asthma attacks, it's not a preventative to keep a patient from developing this type of asthma if they already have a less severe type. That that is correct. There's really no, uh, th- 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 there aren't really uh, disease modifiers for asthma mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, disease modifying medications, which would say remove asthma or remove the overall source. Uh, Instead, we're looking at uh, treatments to help improve patients' lives uh, while they have asthma. Um, And and that's what Nucala does. Where can our listeners get some more information about Nucala? So we do have uh, our GSK-sponsored websites. So uh, Nucala is information is available there. Um, uh, In addition, the the prescribing information is there. Uh, But we because Nucala is a prescribed medication, we always recommend that that patients discuss with their doctor first. Um, uh, it's most important that they understand if Nucala is right for them. Uh, in particular, Nucala, uh, the indication is for patients, uh, or the, the patients that we studied are patients with elevated eosinophil counts, blood eosinophil counts, and those are a, a standard laboratory tests that are done, uh, and their physician will have to know those results. Um, in addition, it would be that because this is children 6 to 11, it would be the parents that would be asking this uh, rather than the children. Thank you for joining us here on the program this morning. Quite informative. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Steinfeld. Thank you for having me, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Jonathan Steinfeld. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.